So today, we're gonna talk about how my beautiful wife conquered having a natural birth. So stay tuned. What you seen as giving them a type of family? <laughs> What's going on world? Welcome back to T3ME. It's your man Tim Ford Jr. And I'm here with my beautiful wife and my beautiful daughter, Mrs. Naya Ford and Mrs. Siobhan Ford Karibu. <laughs> but yes, thank y'all for tuning in. We appreciate each and every one of y'all who've been tuning in and joining and subscribe to this journey so far. We don't take it lightly. We appreciate y'all for taking the time to really watch and just build and grow with us. We want to thank all the people who sent donations, who sent prayers, who sent love. We thank you all and we appreciate it for sure. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button real quick since you're here. Well, we know you clicked on the video to figure out how this woman here conquered doing a natural birth. So I was there watching it and I was there helping of course. But it's, I'll add my two cents in when I see fit. But this is more so about how this woman you know, went through that process and really did the unthinkable that a lot of people try to talk our women out of. So, how was the process having a natural birth, Mrs. Ford? Um, you know? She needs a little. Come on, baby. Yeah. Mumble. All right, guys, so the process of the entire labor was I guess you have to discuss it in stages because the first stage is it's fun. Like we were here, we had some friends over, Steven and Jamila from Stepping Stones at home and Eliana and Shy from Journey with us. We were all just at the house. Shout out to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> we were um we were having like a little meeting and I was having contractions then. And I was having them like just here and there, maybe like once every hour or so. And um they were fine, like I would stop for a second and like get myself together and then I would just continue on with like talking and we even went and got to grab something to eat for dinner that night. And um, on a scale yes. of one to ten, uh -huh. how was your pain during that time? The contractions weren't that bad during that time. Like on a scale of one to ten, I would say they probably were like a four a four. Mm -hmm. So and they were short, so that was fine. Um now that night, they kind of like tapered off. When I woke up in the morning, they were like back at it again. I'm like, all right, I'm like, I'm thinking I'm gonna have this baby probably yeah, today. Yeah. And that was actually the day of the pop up shop. Yes. I'm like, what? I'm like, of <laughs> course the baby will come the day of the pop up shop. Like, mm. that's what they do. Yeah. So we were like debating, like, should we cancel it? And I'm like, no, because people already, you know, there's food vendors there and juice vendors there. They already purchased their food and brought their fruits and I'm like, I don't want to inconvenience them and put them out of money, you know, cause yeah. times is hard, you know? So I was like, well, babe, you just go down there and set up and make sure, you know, all the vendors are there and then just come back home. I'm like, cause my contractions still were like far apart. So I'm like, it's gonna be a while. Like anybody who's been in labor, you know, the process could take like 12 hours a day, sometimes two days. So I'm like, yeah, it'll be a while. And so, I, I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. but I didn't, and I didn't want to do it. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. And she was, she had to really kind of force me to go out. I wanted to stay at home and support the whole time. I was ready to counsel it all and just chill and support. Yeah. But she was thinking about everybody else. So, you know, kudos to my wife for that. But if it would have been up to me, we would have been at the house just getting ready for my baby to get her. Yeah. But I still had work to do and she made me realize that as well. And we, we still had work to do. You know, she still sat at home in the labor, but I went out and handled that. And yeah. I came immediately back home and got into support mode. Yeah, so 
before he left, he started filling up the pool, the yeah. virgin pool, because that can take like three to four hours. Yeah. So if like if you're planning on doing a water verb, go ahead and start. When you start like feeling like okay, like I'm about to go into active labor, start filling up your tub because the tubs can take a really long time to, to get full. Um, so yeah, he was back home by like 11 30, 12, 11 30 in the morning, 12. So they had kind of like died off by then. So we kind of like went throughout the day and I was like, oh, okay. That night, that was when it, that's when it was on and popping. Like, um, that night was when I would say like, things started getting real. Yeah. Um, the contractions started coming in like every nine minutes at that point. And they were like intense, so, like I had to like stop and like get into my breathing. And like Tim was playing the, um, like our birth affirmations and like the music that I had. And he would like massage my feet during um, like the contractions. And then like in between you rest, like I would rest or I like, you know, like prepare, just, just try to like get my mind off of it a little bit. And um, he had prepared me some tea, some fenugreek tea and some raspberry, red raspberry leaf tea which is really good. Um, studies have shown that they um, make your contractions more efficient and they also shorten your labor time and they're good for pain. Um, they don't take away the pain, but they just help it yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was drinking that and um, he would add warm water to the, I, at this point I had gotten into the tub because they were, the contractions were getting more intense. And um, he would like fill the tub up with warm water every, every once in a while just to make sure the temperature was good. And um, I was just kind of like hanging out in there for like two hours. He had set up the camera and everything. I didn't even know he was filming this whole time. That's how like in my own zone I was I was right. in, which is kind of like how you have to do, how you have to prepare yourself for birth. It's like it's more mental than anything. Like you have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself physically by eating properly and you know taking care of your body, staying fit, and you also have to prepare mentally. Like you have to make sure you're in the right mindset, know what you're going through, know the stages of labor. Um, prepare yourself for the contractions, um, do your birth affirmations, like all that stuff. You have to prepare. Yeah, yeah. And from, um, just from, a, you know, the husband and the su support perspective, like she said, it's very important that you prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Like, you have to be there to support your woman for that process. Like, as she's going through that, you have to be the one that's there solidifying everything as well like there's i saw a post recently that said um what did he say men go through yeah birth yeah we go through the same emotions we just don't know how to ex know really how to express them and you know what to do in those moments but if you just really focus on just helping her and becoming one with her then you will man you'll take over and your body will do things you didn't even know because when she was going through her contraction and i was like massaging her feet like I heard her, like it was be it was getting painful, and she was like her contraction sounds were like ah, it's starting to hurt, and I would wow, this <laughs> yeah, and I would pick up my breathing. I would do the breathing that she needed to do, like just out of nowhere, like I would just, and then she'll hear me and pick it up and start doing it herself instead of screaming and like it's painful and then I felt like when I was taking those breaths in I was literally taking some of the pain away from her and I was like really releasing her from it and she testified to it and said yeah it really did help when I was massaging her feet when we were in the bed and when she was in the birthing pool I was intentionally massaging her hand as well because I saw a post I said, what's the method called um, the Bonapace, Bonapace method. Bonapace method. B-O-N-A-P-A-C-E. Yes. They give you a, a few specific pressure points that you can press to sort of redirect the pain. Like if the woman is going through a contraction, they show the foot, I mean the hand, the foot, placing your lower back, I think it's your left hip, mm -hmm. and like one of your knees or something like that, in a certain area of your knee. So if you focus on those areas, like the pain will be decreased for your partner and then she'll be able to go through that contraction a lot more smoothly. So yeah, it's important that you come and support and be by her side through the process because they need us more than we can can even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I labored in a pool. This is like midnight, one, two in the morning, I was laboring in a pool. And then after a while, I was like, I'm tired. Like, I'm gonna go lay down. <laughs> 
And so <laughs> we tried to lay down. It was like four in the morning at this point um, for a little while. And I kept having contractions like ever so, like every eight minutes, eight, eight seven minutes. And I would try to like sleep in between them because I was so tired. And um, that went on. And then I woke up at seven in the morning. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> You know what? Like, we're going to the hospital because, for one, I wanted to see how far dilated that was. Because at that point, I had been in labor for like 24 hours. And it was getting like intense. Yeah. And so I was like, I want to, you know, check on things. And I ain't going to lie, I was like, you know, I, I didn't want an epidural at this point. <laughs> anything. <laughs> anything. So we went to the um, the hospital, Sally International, where we were. Um, we did another video where we showed y'all the same hospital. With Dr. Josephine, shout out to Dr. Josephine. Yes. She's like, she's the best. Thank you, Dr. Josephine. Yeah. So um, we went there, and um, she checked me, and she was like, um, <laughs> yeah, "You about to have this baby like in an hour?" Like, she's like, "You six centimeters," and she was like, when she did the cervical check, she was like, "Now you're eight. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "Now you're eight centimeters. You about to have this baby within Sweet. the next hour." Yeah. And I was like, at this point, I was like getting like to the point where I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't do this. Like I'm not gonna lie, like I, I got to that point, I got like hysterical almost. And um, she, cause she was like, at that point she broke, she had ruptured, broke my waters because she was like, otherwise, because I'm already at eight centimeters, she was like, if I if she didn't do that, then I would have potentially been in labor for longer, waiting for the membranes to break. So yeah, so she was like, she was gonna um, break well, have my waters break or whatever because it would just make the process faster. Like the baby will come within the next hour as opposed to me just sitting there continuing the labor and I was like already in distress. So I was like, okay. And then she had me sit on the, on the birthing ball. Oh my gosh. Like the birthing ball ain't no joke. Like if y'all want to get the baby out of you fast, sit on the birthing ball. So because it, it opens up your pelvis and it helps bring the baby down faster. So that last hour was like, the hardest part for me. Like the, the part up until then was fine. Like it was manageable. But that last hour during the transition, which they say transition is the, is the hardest part. Um, like when you look up labor. Um, I was asking for everything. Like Man, <laughs> everything literally. but for Jesus to come and take me. I'm like, Lord. And then um, she checked me like 30 minutes later after I got there. She was like, okay. She was like, you ready to push? I was like, what? Push. She was like, show me how to push. She was like, hold this leg, hold this leg and bear down and push like you got to poop. And so um, I was like, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. And she was like, just do it. And then I did it. Four pushes later, baby Naya was here. Baby Naya. I was like in shock and relieved all at the same time. Like, I just really couldn't believe that I did it. And because I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to pain. Like I don't like pain, I don't like needles, I don't like any of that. And so if I can do it, guys, you guys can do it. Like. You you will get to probably get to a point, and that's the transition phase, the last part, the shortest part of your birth, where you're like, oh my gosh, like, like oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> but pushing wasn't bad. Um, the worst part was the contractions towards the end, the latter phases, because they come so fast together. Like, as soon as you get over one, you take a break, take a breath, and another one is coming. So that was like the hardest part for me. Pushing her out was fine. Okay. Great. Um, it's weird to hear you say that pushing out a baby yeah. was fine. Because at that point I was ready to get her out and uh, the, the nurse even was pushing on my stomach. <laughs> it was crazy. Bro. Uh, yeah. That lady hopped on my wife. Like not not on her literally. But it was like a stool beside the bed. Yeah. The woman hopped on the stool and started pushing from the top of her stomach. And they got the baby out. And they got the baby out. There's three of them. Her and two two nurses and yeah. both or no, Dr. Josephine and one nurse. And she pushed it out with, man, teamwork. Man, and the thing, like, I enjoy giving birth here way better than in America um, overall just because, one, the doctors are, like, way more knowledgeable here because the women here, they birth naturally all the time. Like, they don't have, for one, the epidural is too expensive. The epidural is, like, 500 USD, which yeah. is, like, 1 million Tanzanian shillings. They can't afford that. So they know how to get the baby out of you efficiently. They know natural remedies for you to take. Like at one point, my iron levels were low during pregnancy. She was like, eat sweet potato leaves, drink hibiscus tea, and some other things she recommended for me to do to help with my iron. She was like, I don't want to prescribe you iron tablets. She was like, this is what you can eat. In America, if your iron is low, they immediately 
telling you you're gonna get iron infusion or you're gonna take some iron pills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they don't even try like natural remedies and like I had I even asked her about the epidural, like just during one of our prenatal visits just to see like mm -hmm. what the process was. She was like, No, she was like, You're not getting an epidural. She, she was like, You can do it on your own. She was like, Epidurals mess up your back and she just like went down the whole list and I'm like, This is a doctor. Like, you know, in America they they push epidurals, they push C sections on, on women, they push inductions, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, like, and even, like, when I went to the hospital, I appreciated her because she saw, like, I was in pain, and she was like, okay, she was like, I'm going to have a baby out of you in an hour, and she literally had the baby out of me in an hour, <laughs> naturally, yeah. Yeah. Um, Good job. Yeah, so, and then um, the food at the hospital was really good, too. Um, so, yeah, like, um, to birth at the hospital, at that hospital was, like, it was 2 million T-shillings, but that's the international hospital. If you go to like the local hospital, you can't work there for like, like probably like nothing. Just not nothing literally. Not nothing, but It'd like be cheaper. Yeah, yeah. way <laughs> cheaper, like a hundred dollars probably. Yeah. Um, but you know, like coming from the West, and when you like, for me, I guess I wanted something that was more familiar to me. Um, just doing that transition. Now for the next one, you know, who knows? Maybe I go to the bush. Or like the um, to do like with the mid, the bush midwives or um, one of the the more local hospitals. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, ladies, like listen. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, prepare yourself. Yes, it's going to be painful. Yes, you can do it. Um, like our bodies were made to do this, and um, don't be scared. Like mm -hmm. don't be scared. You're gonna get through it. So it's gonna be fine. So I have a question for the people who. Uh, who may want to, you know, have to support someone. Mm -hmm. What was the best things, like, that helped you get through it? Okay, I would say being there, just the, their presence, being there, like, um, some men, like, they choose to, like, take a, a non-active role in, in labor, like, they don't want to be in a room because they get squeamish. No, like, we need y'all there with us, holding our hand, telling us it's okay, massaging us, bringing us tea, Food, whatever we need, um, like your your wife or your, your partner, they definitely need you there and present with them. So I would say just like being there and being present in the moment, not just being there and holding, holding space, but like actually being present and doing the things that she needs to get through it. Okay, good answer. Good answer. What do you think about that baby night? Mm -hmm. You think it was good? <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, like she said, it's important that you sit there and be present in the moment and support. There was four contractions that I happened to catch on camera while we were in the birthing pool. So I can give you a clear example of how you can support in that moment and in those moments so you can be there for them and really help them get through that. Because like she said, it's important that we be present. It's important that we in the moment with them because they can, they need it. I know when T3 uh, was, was being born, we were in the States and uh, we were at a hospital and she was connected to the machines. So I went to the store for like, it was like directly across the street, maybe like two minutes, if that. Man, the midwife called me like, soon as I'm walking in the door, like, where are you at? Because your wife heart rate has increased. You need to get back in here now. <laughs> so like we're connected in a way where they need us there. And so, man, it's important that you take that time and really just block the world out, block whatever else is going on and be present in the moment. I know they don't teach us that. They tell us they got it. They don't understand. But when I was actually in the hospital too, like I was praying over my wife, kissing her on her forehead, like coaching her through the process of her pushing and dealing with the pain. And the doctor was like, hold on. Like, what is this? I've really never seen them like this. What church do y'all go to? Like that's what she started asking. So, it's different, but we have to start doing it. Yes, you know, we haven't been taught, but now we're being taught. This is your being taught moment. So that's not an excuse anymore. They need us, so you gotta be there. Yeah, and one thing I forgot to talk about real quick was the recovery. The recovery from when I had an epidural versus natural, uh, ver naturally has been much better, like the recovery phase. For one, no tears. You're less likely to tear when you have a natural birth because you can feel yourself pushing the baby out. When you have an epidural, you're numb. So you can literally be sitting there pushing for like two hours. You wind up with hemorrhoids, you wind up tearing because they may have to do like a vacuum or a episiotomy to get the baby out because you just 
you can't feel anything. So you don't know what you're pushing. You don't even know if you're pushing. Like you don't know what you're doing. Um, so and the recovery has been like much better. I was like up and up and at him like the next day, right after actually. Like I was like, all right, like I was walking, like you know everything was good. The recovery has been much better with that as well. Um, and also for um, if you're looking for some birth affirmations to play like during your labor and like up until your labor to like get you in a good mindset, there's an app called Christian Hypnobirthing where it plays like scriptures and like positive affirmations that you can play like to prepare yourself for birth and also during the birthing process. And also there's another um, lady, her name is Janet Angela Mills. And her um, her little, it's a playlist, it's called Supernatural Childbirth in the Glory. And um, I would recommend her as well. She has like another um, set of like scriptures and like positive affirmations over you and your baby and everything. So definitely check those out. Yes. Those are my tips. And um, you know, if y'all have any questions, feel free to leave a question down below in the comment section. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna start doing this new thing. We're going to do a comment winner on the next video. And here on out, every time we see a meaningful comment or something that's going to inspire people or something that's going to be funny, we're going to start giving you an opportunity to be shown on the platform. So, you know, make sure you guys engage and let us know how you all feel and how you feel about the content. And we appreciate you all for tuning in. Yeah, and also, um, if you are looking to repatriate to Tanzania, um, click the link below and get your passport back. And it's going to be Um, also, please make sure you support the land, the sustainable land project that we have. Um, that link will be down below as well. Thank you guys so much. Yes. So y'all watch this clip of us in the pool, or well, her in the pool, and me supporting <laughs> on the outside. And we'll be following it up with T3 meeting his little sister. Yeah. So thank you all and shalom. Shalom.
So today, we taking T3 to meet his younger sister. You ready to go meet your sister? Huh? No. No. Octa. Octa? That's your friend. No, no, not Jojo. We gotta go see your sister. Baba Jojo Lala. Yeah, Baba Jojo Lala. So we're gonna go see your sister, okay? Okay? All right, let's go. Now it's time. You happy to be a baby brother? I'm T3. That's my baby. What happened to your face? I don't know. You taking it all in. How do you feel about being a big brother? Huh? <laughs> you trying to take it all in. Baby. Baby. Mm. You excited? I am. big brother man I can see it now just look at the focus in your eyes look at the placement of your hands mm-hmm you gonna always take care of your sister ain't you yep you gotta be gentle man you gotta teach him that part too but you're doing an awesome job I'm proud of you man good job Yep, see Toto. We do. <laughs> Alright, tell the people about die. I'm a puppy. No, say but die. <laughs> bye bye. Asante sana.